Good evening, good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And the debate is on still in terms of should we make Bob Marley and Dr. Uh, Miss, you know, what's her name again now? Miss Louise Bennett, um, Dr. Louise Bennett, national heroes. Should they become national heroes of Jamaica? These two very important Jamaican characters. We know Bob Marley. I don't have to introduce him. He is world renowned. Anywhere you go in the world, people do know about him, about his um, legend, sort of his legendary in the musical um, fraternity. So I do understand that we might be thinking that Bob Marley should be earning that status of national hero. But should we be rushing to, you know, accord these people with that sort of status? In the first place, we have a lot of unresolved problems and issues in Jamaica that we need to resolve, that we need to solve. We cannot at this moment be distracted by the high homicide rate we have there, an economy that is not functioning in the interest of the masses of Jamaicans. And I don't want you to tell me about what the IMF and the World Banks or the World Bank have said, right? I have read their reports. I have seen their reports. That is the official report coming from the government. But I disagree with them. And I'm sure working class people, working class Jamaicans and Jamaicans in general will not agree with the IMF's pronouncements and their understanding of our economic success. Economic success for the minority class, the oligarchs, but it is not a success story for the majority of Jamaicans. So we have really an economy that is in auto chaos, and that is not working for the masses of people in Jamaica. So why are we talking about national hero status? How is that going to help the ordinary Jamaican? It's time for us now to get our acts together. Miss Louise Bennett, why would you want to consider her to be a national hero? Yes, she has made significant contributions to language development in Jamaica, and she has sensitized us, and she has made us understand um, that our language, our local language, the Jamaican Creole, is a language that we should all be proud of. I don't think, though, that her work, irrespective of what people want to say, merits that of being a national hero. Who was she fighting against? Yes, the oligarchy, yes, the the, uh, the elite class in Jamaica might not have found her and her, you know, um, vindication, should I say, of the Jamaican dialect to be in good stead. However, she was not really fighting per se for the language. She brought it to the fore and she entertained us. But to suggest that she was there fighting and perhaps had to leave her country, you know, like... Marcus Garvey, I don't think that she was, it, it was like a battle, it's a warfare against the state. No, right? She made it popular. She popularized the local dialect. And, you know, she penned some beautiful points that we have recited and that we've enjoyed. She um, was responsible for a lot of the pantomimes that, you know, that were played in Jamaica. So we really see her as a national treasure. She is a national treasure. I don't think she's a national hero, right? We can have these people as being a national, as being national treasures, but they're not necessarily national heroes. And I agree with the prime minister on this and also the former prime minister of Jacob, um, Jamaica, that's Bruce Golding, because, you know, I understand that from Bruce Golding's time, they were trying to set up, which I'm. it seems to me that Mr. Honus is now saying is finished, um, a, another national honor, which would be the order of national icon, which I think that would be good. Why suggest that everybody in Jamaica that is a little bit world renowned and has become global that they need to be heroes? Why do we want to think that way? So everybody who probably writes and everybody who, you know, like any singer in Jamaica, many of our dance hall musicians. So because Tessan Chin, for example, went on The Voice and she became global, 
the other day, it means therefore that we should make our national hero or heroine. I don't think so. I think that we need to rethink our positions. Yes, I agree with Ms. Golding and Dr. Andrew Honest that we could definitely, you know, recognize people, recognize and have another um, national honor called the Order of National Icon. What, what's wrong with that? But to say that Mrs. that Dr. Louise Bennett is a national heroine is a little stretch. I am thinking of a hero or a heroine as someone who fought for a particular cause. I mean, they were up against a lot of um, you know, challenges, you know, perhaps, you know, against the state, perhaps ruined their lives because they were standing up for that particular value, right? Or that particular human right. Yes, I don't know if Miss Lou was in any great danger in her standing up for the Jamaican dialect in terms of her standing up for the language. I don't think so. And on that basis, I don't think that she merits becoming a national hero. Now, look at what you have people like um, this, you know, in, in the Gleaner we see here where a uh, professor, professor at the University of the West is a very garbage, uh, garbage scholar um, who I have a lot of respect for. I was just trying to look at the the Gleaner report here about, you know, um, Golding, which is, you know, however, called for Marley to be formally recognized as a national hero. That is Mark Golding. He argued time come for his status as a hero to be formalized here at home, adding that Marley, more than any other, has made our music an inspirational force of liberation. How has Mark, how has Bob Marley made our music an international force of liberation? Um, and equality for the peoples of the world. We say that a lot of times, but is it the music that really has made it a force of libera liberation, as um, Mark Golding is here suggesting? His greatness is embraced in all corners of the, of the earth. He gave us the enduring power of one love, yet to me, he's a national treasure. He's a national icon. I don't think I would put Bob Marley on the level of a national hero. I don't think so. And what was he fighting for? I mean, he had some things in his music, get up, stand up, stand up for your rights and stuff like that. But can we say that he was fighting for a cause that endangered his life? I don't know. I think that his was more of entertainment. I don't think they what we regard as national heroes that they were trying to entertain people. Right, his I see Bob Marley in the realm of entertainment. I don't know if entertainment it can be considered someone who can say that that person is a national hero. Yes, he came up in some conflict sometimes with the state, um, and he had to leave Jamaica and all of the stuff. But I don't know if Bob Marley, as we are suggesting here, and you know the, the weed smoking. Um, that Bob Marley sort of promoted in Jamaica, the, the rude boy culture, that really has helped to damage our culture. Uh, I don't know if I would have him as a national hero. All right? We need people who we can check the box off in terms of what they promoted, decency and not this rude boy and this bad banism that we have developed in Jamaica. You know, we need to understand that we want people who um, demonstrate civility and people who have really are unquestioned in terms of their, you know, their character traits. I don't know if Bob Marley is best suited at this juncture for history to become a national hero. Now, I would say, and let me just say, I think I've said enough on Bob Marley because I had had videos on him. I'm not going to say, repeat what I said in previous videos about Bob Marley not being or not being qualified to be a national hero. I think what we need now, ladies and gentlemen, are economic heroes and educational heroes. So if we can have a finance minister who will be able to lift our economy out of the doldrums of its out of its economic malaise then I think that I would say yes.
and we can see it when we walk around the country throughout the length and breadth of Jamaica, we can see economic development written all over the face, all over the landscape of Jamaica, then I would say yes. Let's make that person a national hero because we are in a state of affairs right now that is a mess, right? Where our economy is really not working in the best interest of the masses. It's working in the best interest of the minority class. So yes, IMF, I agree with you that there might have been some amount of success but that success is not for, is not geared towards the majority of people living on the island. So yes, I am not in disagreement with the island, but we have to contextualize when we talk about, you know, economic well-being and economic development, because it's not economic development and growth for the masses, but for the minority. And what if it is only functioning for the minority? That means that is really not really economic growth because the typical man, the ordinary man, is not feeling that. We're having this high rate of brain drain and our teachers are leaving, our doctors are leaving, our nurses are leaving, would suggest that our economy is not doing well. Our economy is not doing well. So let's not fool ourselves. Let's not be delusional here, as many of us are, acting as if we are in this crisis of delusion, because that's what we're suffering down there too in Jamaica. People are suffering from this crisis of delusion where we have this delusion of grandeur, where we think we're so big on the world stage and people view us as very important. And the Jamaican culture is so important to the world that the world could not live without us. And I did say to you that the IMF, the people in Congress in 2012, they're about when we did not want to ink out the agreement with the IMF because of the stringent laws, the policies that the IMF wanted to impose upon Jamaica. Our leaders were very, very frightened, right? They were scared because they wondered if we would have revolted, that Jamaicans would have revolted against the IMF policies, which we didn't, right? But they didn't know that we would not have revolted. So, but in Congress, it was that if Jamaica did not want to sign the IMF agreement, let Jamaica burn. That was what the senators there had to say in Congress, in the U.S. Congress. Let Jamaica burn. As far as they're concerned, we are not important in the world. So we need to get our economics together. If we don't get our economics together, nobody on the global stage will respect us. We, we spend too much time on culture and sports and music and food. And nothing is wrong that we have you know, created a world-class culture in terms of music and food and, and you know, and, and athletics. But a country needs much more than that. And people are not going to respect us for just having a man, for having produced a man like the same boom. Other countries have produced lots of other athletes, right? And we don't see where in Africa where they've produced lots of different athletes and all parts of the world. We're not seeing where that is giving, you know, the, these countries respect. Look at African Americans. I mean, look at the culture, the American culture. I mean, without African Americans, America would not have had a global culture. Without Black Americans, America would not have had a global culture. They single handedly promoted American culture, America, American culture rather, to the world. And yet, still, Black people in America are not necessarily respected. They're not respected because Black people in America have not developed for themselves an economy that functions for the masses of Black Americans. Yes, we have some famous Black Americans. So we have the basketball athletes. They're famous. We have lots of entertainers like the Michael Jacksons. Lots of them. Doesn't mean, therefore, that because, let us look at Michael Jackson and the sort of fame. There's no way you're probably anywhere in the world that you go, you're going to hear Mike, Michael Jackson. Does he have that sort of status in the United States? No, he doesn't, for the most part, in the main the mainstream culture that I'm talking about. And you might say, oh, yeah, it's a white culture. And because he's Black, they would not have, um, you know, elevated him to that standard. The point I'm making here is that being famous and world renowned in terms of culture and entertainment really does not bring respect, do not accord respect 
to any nation. We've got to develop our economy. We've got to educate our people. And when people go to Jamaica for the most part, when they walk around the society, I am sure they're not seeing an educated civil populace. They're not seeing an economy that an, an economy that is working for the masses of Jamaica there. And I'm not suggesting here that we have to be wealthy and live in big mansions. That's what I'm suggesting. Right? But you see lots of people living in shacks. People are not able to communicate in English. And I'm not saying we have to communicate in standard English and sound like the Queen. But I'm saying to you that they can communicate in basic English. Basic English. And what these guys are promoting and talking about Mrs. Lou. Mrs. Lou, I'm sure, Miss Lou was not trying to promote any patwa and to for patwa to eclipse English. She wasn't trying to do that. She was just saying that the two language can cohere, right? And we should be proud of the legacy that our, our ancestors left us. It was a plantation language, the language of the plantation, Massa, Bakra, the language that was used to communicate with all of us because we came from different parts of Africa. And we should preserve it. But I think that we have put an in, in, inordinate amount of stress and, and influence and what should I say now? Emphasis, that's the word I'm looking for. Emphasis on the Creole. And that's why we're not doing well in English because we are not striving to speak English as a nation. What we want to be, we want to be like the dance hall culture and talk this sort of way. Right, so we want to dress the way how the dance hall singers dress. We want to communicate the way how they communicate. Our values have changed, and those change in values and attitudes is being reflected. It's actually being reflected in the way we speak, in the way we communicate. Right, and you hear it. You see it online when you see Jamaicans speaking. That you hear the dance hall sort of cadence in the way how they communicate. Let us say, for example, that people, the baby boomers, who would be my parents, they, you know, my uncle, for example, who speaks standard English, didn't grow up in an environment where English was being spoken. His mother was a working class woman, right? Who cleaned. They, you know, was an, a member of the ancillary staff at your castle high school. But the way in which he communicates and he speaks is reflective of someone who went to high school in that in that era. What has happened to our era where we have people leaving university, university graduates coming from the University of the West and is from the University of Technology and from the universities down there who are not able to communicate with any level of facility using standard English. Why? What has happened? What really has happened? Think because we have moved away from the basic values, from a softer, gentler society, where we have totally clothed ourselves now with this dance hall culture. And that's what this is one of the, the influences, the effects, the negative effects of the dance hall culture that has really taken over our society. Right, So I think that we need to look more at the economy and any finance minister, be it Dr. Omar Davis, well, he's no longer there because he's now retired, but anyone who comes upon the scene who is able to transform our economy and transform our educational landscape and make us a world-class place in terms of education, that person, I would say, that will be the first person or, or persons to um, accord the level of national hero. Until then, I don't think we need any more cultural heroes. We don't need any more social heroes, whatever heroes you're talking about. I think we've had too much. I don't even think we need a political hero. We have enough. In fact, many of these heroes that we have on our books, many of our kids don't even know them and they don't know the values that they actually you know, um, exemplified in their lives. So why are we trying to rack up and to add more national heroes to the heroes, but we don't even know the heroes that we have there in Jamaica now. We don't even know their philosophies. Many of our young people don't even know the philosophies of Marcus Mazaya Garvey. Why don't we try to teach Marcus Mazaya Garvey in schools now and now talk about 
developing our socioeconomic um, infrastructure. Let's talk about Marcus Garvey. But and let us even learn more about the national heroes that we have we have on our books. We don't need to add any more because the ones that we have on our books are just there and we just symbolically recognize them every National Heroes Day. But really and truly, our young people do are not interacting with their philosophies, with their works, with you know their whatever the um, revolutionary movements that they were um, involved in. So these are things we need to do. We like to look at symbolic gestures and everything is symbolism and nothing is really about building our nation in Jamaica. It's all about recognizing and, you know, being superficial. Everything is just superficial. So you say Bolt went and he got his, you know, the fastest man in the world. And as soon as he went, we gave him a, a, a doctorate. Right? When you say in Bolt, it's still to have grown. He had he had a lot more years to grow and to understand the world in which he lived. Right? He's not a person even who values education, but we're, we're going to accord him with a PhD, with a doctorate. Right? And I'm not suggesting now that it's, it could not be done, but I'm saying these are the things that we do and we place a lot of emphasis on these very superficial things that are not helping us. They're not building us as a people. We have to build ourselves. We cannot continue to spend our days there arguing about who should be national hero and who should not be national hero. As I'm suggesting to you, I think Jamaicans also, everybody, would be in agreement if we have a finance minister who transformed the economy in Jamaica, make it work for the majority of people, because an economy will never work for everybody, because you know you have lazy people and people who are just not willing to um to move, you know, for to to, to really uh improve on their lives. But an economy that gives equal opportunities for people to exist. And if they want to be successful, they can. The one which we're functioning does not give people equal opportunities. As a result of that, it's not functioning. So if we can create that economy and then we turn to education where our schools are transformed, you know, we have new schools being built. The ones that are there are being refurbished. We have good furniture there, modern equipment, all of that in the classroom. That person, if we could have that person one of these days, that I would say, and I'm sure many Jamaicans, if not all Jamaicans would agree, yes, that person or those persons for national hero, not another Miss Lou or not another Andrew Tucker. Or, yeah, if Andrew Tucker should transform the economy, or transform education in Jamaica as a minister of education, yes, I would be in agreement for Andrew Tucker to be accorded as a national hero. But we don't need, we do not need at this point of our history anymore, cultural icon. I think we've had enough of our political and, you know, and, and, and cultural icons. We place too much value on culture. And our culture, to some extent, has some positive value, don't get me wrong, some positive aspects of our culture, but a lot of what we are selling as Jamaica culture, Jamaican culture, it, you know, right now, is not pretty, right? And it's hideous. Uh, if, you know, if, you, if I should speak the truth. And uh, it's not very impressive on the world stage. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you would like, share, and subscribe. Um, remember now that you just need to hit the subscription button and also hit the like button to your left so that the videos can be shared with as many people on the platform. See you then. All the best to you. Bye.